Many rappers often find themselves on the wrong side of the law, and depending on the magnitude of their offense, they may end up within prison walls. The prison as we know is a place of rehabilitation, but that doesn't stop fights from breaking out now and then. In this video, I'll be talking about rappers who got into fights in prison, from getting into fights with inmates to getting into fights with guards. There's no limit to how these rappers are willing to fight dirty in prison. Before we start the video, be sure to leave a like, and if you'd like to join this month's giveaway for one of these items on the screen, then all you have to do is subscribe to the channel, and then watch this video to the end to comment the hidden keyword. Good luck. First up is Kodak Black. Over the past few years, Kodak Black has been faced with a series of legal trouble which has seen him in and out of jail. Back in May 2019, he was arrested on two counts for making a false statement on a governmental form. This was due to a situation that occurred back in January of the same year in which he had made a false statement to buy firearms. While awaiting sentencing for the charge, he had gotten into a fistfight in jail in October of 2019, and the fight ended with the security guard getting hospitalized. So how did this fight go down? According to reports, Kodak Black had gotten into a fight with an inmate. The reason why the altercation happened is not clear, but upon seeing the fighting inmates, correction officers had intervened to break them up. In the process, Kodak Black was pepper sprayed by a guard and he retaliated by throwing punches at the guards and grabbing hold of another guard's genitals. In the end, it took about four guards to subdue him, but it was too late for the guard whose genitals he had grabbed a hold of. Kodak Black's firm hold on the guard's testicles was said to have caused a breach of the guard's abdomen and intestinal walls. The guard was hospitalized with a hernia and had to undergo surgery. This fight incident was not used against Kodak Black during his sentencing, but he still ended up getting slammed with about 46 months in prison due to the weapons charge. Kodak Black later took to his Instagram to address the fight incident. In a lengthy post on Instagram, he had claimed to have been drugged without his knowledge. He had said the unknown substance gave him an out-of-body experience and had him feeling like he was possessed and dying slowly. Due to the way he felt, he had gone to the CO's office to seek medical attention, but for some reasons he was denied. This left him in a state of paranoia and shortly after that he had gotten into a fight with the inmate. The substance he had been drugged with still remains a mystery since it didn't turn up when a urine analysis test was conducted on him. Also in his Instagram post, Kodak Black said he was placed in solitary confinement under inhumane conditions and even said that he had not inflicted injury on the guard whose genitals he had grabbed. He claimed that the guard had inflicted injuries on himself for monetary gains. Part of the post he made on Instagram reads, I was being so brutally that I had to be taken to the box in a wheelchair. I've been here for 45 days without commissary, hygiene stressed out, and on psych meds. Having to mourn the loss of my brother Juice World behind the doors. Prior to this, there were a few inmates who intentionally beat up an officer and no charges were filed. Meanwhile, I get into a fight with another inmate and this officer jumps in to inflict harm on himself and capitalize on my status as a local celebrity. I had officers tell me that the CEO was okay that night and that he's trying to go this route because he self-checked himself in the hospital. I've also heard officers tell me that the CEO has been back to FDC and bragging that he'll get a quarter million from me. I want to shed this light on police brutality and the tactics they use to cover the behinds. Hashtag justice for Kodak. Well, that wasn't the end of Kodak Black's trouble in prison. In May of the following year, while still serving his prison sentence, news got out that he had been attacked and severely beaten by about seven prison guards. During the process, it was said that the prison guards had struck him in the head several times with metal objects. After that, one of the guards had then flicked Kodak Black's genitals and said, you're not so gangster now, you're gonna need bigger balls to survive. It's not clear why the guards had treated him in such a manner and Kodak Black had not been available at the time to give his side of the story. This was because he was denied access to phone and visitation for six months as punishment for the October 2019 fight incident he had gone involved in. Kodak Black's team and lawyer had gone to know about the details of the beating from inmates at the prison where he was locked up. Kodak Black would eventually breathe a sigh of relief in January 2021 after he was granted a presidential pardon by ex-president Donald Trump. Kodak Black's commitment to supporting a variety of charitable efforts was cited by the White House as part of the reasons he was granted a pardon. Since his release from prison, he has maintained a clean sheet and hopefully it stays that way so he can focus on making his music. Up next is Keisu. The Jacksonville rapper, whose real name is Hakeem Robinson, was initially arrested in September 2020 on charges related to the murder of a guy who goes by the name Charles Quentin McCormick Jr., aka Lil Buck. Following this, evidence began to surface that he had also been allegedly involved in the shooting of a 16-year-old teenager who goes by the name Adrian Garner. Keisu is also facing a charge related to the murder of Adrian Garner. About a year after Keisu's arrest, the video surfaced on the internet which showed officers slamming him to the ground. 
The video had been shared on his Instagram account and he had claimed in the caption of the post that he was being brutalized every day by officers. The caption reads, Modern Slavery, even though my innocence is being proven, I'm still being targeted and abused every day while I'm in here. These officers still have not been suspended or no consequences. I'm fighting for my life mentally and physically. No matter what they do to me, they keep an innocent man down. Hashtag free me. This video did not sit well with a number of people, including K. Sue's mother and grandmother, who were alarmed that he was being mistreated in jail. K. Sue's grandmother had filed an internal affairs complaint due to the incident, but she had gotten a response that nothing was found wrong with the guard's conduct. According to Jacksonville Sheriff's Office Internal Affairs, K. Sue himself had been the cause of his mistreatment by the guards. According to reports, K. Sue had for whatever reason refused to go back to his cell after having his shower and leisure time. He had probably gotten tired of getting ordered about in prison, and it was said that he had then gotten aggressive and began yelling at the officers, saying they were always messing with him. Due to the show he was putting on, an officer had handcuffed him, and while the officer was leaving his cell, K. Sue had threatened him, saying the words, My people gonna kill you. The officer had then tried to subdue K. Sue, but he had resisted. Another officer had to intervene, and he grabbed K. Sue and slammed him to the ground. While struggling underneath the officer, K. Sue was not done running his mouth. He further said, I've killed people before, I'll do it again. K. Sue's attorney had released a statement in regards to the altercation. The statement reads, Those accused are innocent unless proven guilty, and Akeem Robinson is clearly innocent because he cannot physically be the shooter. Innocent with no prior felony convictions. And this is how the innocent are treated by JSO. Hakeem is in a fight for his life against the government. He has no time or reason to fight with the JSO officer. Now concerning the murder charges, if he's found guilty of them, he would be going away for a long time. His lawyer has tried to prove his innocence by pointing out that Keisu cannot physically be the shooter in the first murder case since he's bigger than the shooter that was captured in the dash cam video. But then if Keisu eventually beats the first murder case, what are the chances that he would also beat the Adrian Garner murder case who was shot and killed in broad daylight? At the moment, Keisu's future is uncertain and he patiently sits behind bars awaiting his fate. The next rapper I'll be talking about is K-Flock. K-Flock is a well-known name on the streets of the Bronx for his music and for his involvement in the deadly gang war that's seen many dead. At only the age of 18, he was making waves on the New York drill rap scene until the long arm of the law caught up with him. K Flock was taken into custody after he turned himself in last year, December. He was charged with first degree murder and criminal possession of a weapon in connection to the shooting death of a 24 year old man who goes by the name Oscar Hernandez. K Flock has since been locked up in Rikers Island. A month after K Flock's arrest, rumors got out that he had gotten into trouble while in prison. The detail of the rumor was that a rival gang member had spotted K Flock and had beaten him up. It was said that he had suffered severe injuries as a result of the beating and had to be transported to the hospital wing of Rikers Island. The details of this alleged fight is quite limited and no one knows how it started. Well, this story of K-Flock getting beat up in prison went viral and K-Flock himself got to know about it. He immediately released an audio saying that he had not been beaten up while in jail and it was only rumors. At the moment, no one knows what the truth of the situation is. It might all be rumors and at the same time, K-Flock might be trying to hide something. Who knows, he might not want the story of him getting beat up going around because it might make him appear weak. But regardless of whether k Flock got beat up or not, he still faces an uncertain future due to the murder charge he's faced with. Talking about the murder charge, there have been contradicting accounts of what really went down on the day of Oscar Hernandez's murder. According to the authorities, Hernandez had been in a barber shop waiting to get a haircut. k Flock had then opened up the door of the barber shop and confronted Hernandez, asking him what he was looking for. Hernandez had then walked out to meet K-Flock and an argument had occurred, which ended with K-Flock pulling out a gun and shooting Hernandez in the neck and back. Well, that was the story the authorities gave because surveillance footage from outside the barbershop tells a different story. In the footage, K-Flock is seen walking down the street with two young girls. He and the girls walk past the barbershop and a few seconds later, Hernandez walks out the barbershop and headed in the same direction as K-Flock. And several seconds later, people came out the barbershop and appeared to be alarmed by something as they stare in the direction that K-Flock and Hernandez had gone. Their surveillance footage has gotten people wondering if K-Flock is actually guilty of the crime. Well, at the moment, K-Flock is yet to be declared guilty or innocent of the crime and is currently sitting in jail awaiting his fate. Up next is Casanova. Back before Casanova started his career as a rapper, he was locked up in jail for about seven years. During this period, he got into several fights with fellow inmates, and this landed him in solitary confinement a lot of the times. Due to the fights he was always getting into while in jail, he was feared by other inmates. In an interview, he had even attempted to stab in three to four inmates. While in prison, he also formed a bomb with ASAP Rocky who got locked up in jail for only two weeks. 
After Casanova had served his sentence and was released from jail, he focused on his rap career and was making a name for himself on the rap scene when he got into trouble with the law once again. On December 1, 2020, a warrant was issued for his arrest. According to the warrant, he was the leader of a criminal gang known as the Untouchable Gorilla Stone Nation Gang. He was among 18 alleged members of the Untouchable Gorilla Stone Nation Gang charged in connection with various racketeering, murder, narcotics, farms, and fraud offenses. After the warrant for his arrest got out, he turned himself in to the authorities. In addition to these charges, he was also slammed with an attempted murder charge due to a shooting that had occurred at a Miami club. He was charged alongside another guy who goes by the name Jared Crisper for their involvement in the shooting that left two individuals injured. After about a year of sitting behind bars, he took to his Instagram to make a plea for help. In his Instagram post, he talked about how he had been incarcerated for almost a year and how he had spent a significant amount of money on legal fees to prove his innocence. He also further stated that the charges against him were false and they don't represent or reflect the person he was. A few weeks back, he made a revelation on his Instagram that he had been in solitary confinement for about a month. The details of how he got into solitary confinement are unknown, but some fans are speculating that he might have gotten into a fight in prison. If Casanova is found guilty of the charges, he might be looking at life in prison. That's all I've got for you on this video of rappers getting into fights in prison. Feel free to let me know what you think about this video. Hey you, yeah you, did you like this video? Great, we've got another one for you that we guarantee you'll like and all you have to do is click on the screen. It's free and without any hidden fees, but you have to click on it fast because this message is self-destruct in 5 seconds.